I was in World War II from 42 to uh, till I ended my career. I got a CDD, what you call a certificate of disability discharge. I was a machine gunner. I was a late 30 air cooled machine gun. It, it happened, everything happened so fast, you don't know what's happening. And, and so, uh, yeah, it, you don't get you don't get really scared because you you haven't got time to. You were trained. You were trained all these years in basic training to fight a war. That's what we were in there for, and uh, we did it. Well, I, I was in a I was in a battle with a German. And uh, he started bouncing her bullets off my gun. So my gun jammed. I reached over and tried to uh, unjam my gun. And they shot me right to the elbow. Right to the right elbow. And uh, that, so that's when I was taken prisoner. Tenth. Of uh, June, June, June. They were pretty quiet people. They uh, first thing I was laying on the ground for 14 hours. Then, uh, then I, the Germans took me prisoner, and I asked them for a cigarette. And <laughs> he, they gave me a lucky strike. <laughs> And I asked him for a drink, and they gave me cider. Oh, I was the Captain Sherberg. Uh, Sherberg, France, is a, they had a hospital that had converted to taking care of POWs. It was full of POWs from uh, mostly paratroopers, because we jumped in there at 2.30 in the morning on D-Day. And so uh, it was a, a pretty interesting thing to go through, but you wouldn't want to do it again. The conditions weren't very, very good, I'll tell you that for sure. Because one day we had a, a five medium bombers and Billy Mitchells. They flew over and I thought they were going to fly, keep flying, but they made a U-turn up there and they started dropping bombs on us guys. They knocked our sewer out. They knocked our water out. And they knocked everything out that was power, any power to it. So if you had to go relieve yourself, well, there's the yard, the whole yard. They put a cast on me. And uh, when I got back to England, the English doctors put a different cast on it, but the same identical cast. So the Germans, they did, they did give me a little medical attention. How long were you held captive? Well, I figured 20 days. Uh, it was hard to keep track of time at that time, but uh, my folks didn't know where I was at. They they, they received word that I was missing in action, which I was. And uh, but no, they uh, basically took fairly good care of us guys. But they didn't have nothing to feed us with. We got it ready for to feed us. Then the airplanes would be upstairs, and then they'd, they'd call that off. But uh, we, I didn't lose any period of uh, weight loss from be, being a health prisoner. You eat that German black bread. <laughs>
the people that are guarding us. They were just kids. They were only about 16, 17. But you could tell by looking at them. But they were, they were taking care of, there's our guards. This famous uh, war correspondent by the name of Ernie Pyle. That hit you, don't it? And he, Fred Wandell from Dallas, Texas, he was one of my best buddies. And uh, we, we, we took care of each other, you know. If we needed help, we got help from each other. And here comes the Ernie Pyle walking in there and he started interviewing us guys. Genuine Ernie Pyle. When he's the one that later got killed in the Pacific. He got he got killed over there in the war. But uh, he interviewed us and I don't know if it ever got, got into uh, writing, you know. But uh, Ernie Pyle. So he came in and told you that you were free, or did the Nazis? No, 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 no. He uh, when he come in, come in to visit us, we were already freed because the Germans didn't have enough uh, strength to hold us guys, and uh, so. Did you like escape, or did they just say you're free? No, 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 no. They, we just, were, we were free. We could have uh, walked out of there two or three days before that. But uh, the last two or three days we were held, we couldn't find a guard. They couldn't find a guard because they were, they were vice versa. Yeah, it was, a, it was an awful experience, and, but it's good to get it. It was good to get it over with when it was done. What was the ship ride home like? The ship from overseas. Oh, that I. Do you know what ship you were on? Uh, Aquitania. Never, never. N never knew a single soul, but I was the happiest guy in the world because I had for Statue of Liberty. That's a hunk of gold just looking at you. When I when I saw that Statue of Liberty, I knew I was in the United States. Yeah, that was really great. Thank you for watching this episode of the Museum Road Show. Brought to you by 125 Apparel.